Life Stories Live. Growing up, why were people so mean to me and my brother and my sister and my mother and my father? Um, why didn't they understand? Why didn't they want to talk? Um, you know, why, why were people doing drugs and so much um, unhealthy stuff in the music industry? It all began to make sense slowly as I understood what sin was. And then slowly he began to um, teach me that sin was so unholy and so ungodly that it had separated us from having a relationship with God. And that God in his great mercy and wisdom had planned um, to redeem me and you um, back to God through his plan of redemption by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to pay for the price of sin. This was the only sufficient way that could clean me and clean you and clean this world of sin in that it had to be washed clean through a sacrifice that was pure and sinless, which was Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus Christ. Um, and he would take me through the Ten Commandments because I kept saying, well, I'm not that bad as her next door. Hang on a minute. Or thingy in the music industry. or blah, blah, blah. You know, I pay my taxes. And, blah. and slowly he said, right, let's go through the Ten Commandments because this is the way that God has taught us to understand um, really what has separated us from us. Um, because he understands what we're doing and why we're doing it. So he said, you know, have you ever cheated? Yes. Have you ever taken God's name in vain? Yes. Yeah. Um, have you ever stolen anything, anything even small? Yes. You know. Have you um, envied people? Yes. You know, I was taking all these words, even, even adultery, because uh, I had had adulterous thoughts in my life. And and then he said, and I thought, well, I'm, I haven't murdered anyone. The Ten Commandments says that if you committed murder, do not commit murder. Sorry. And, I, and he said to me, you know, because God is so just and righteous and pure and holy and pure love, um, that even when one of his creations hates another one, it, it is so destructive to God. It's like murder. It's like murder to God. And I thought, well, I have definitely had hatred towards people. And so God, in that time, that precious time, was teaching me and bringing me to understand who I was and I've been created in his image to reflect his beauty and glory and wonder that I'd fallen away from God and that my position before him now was completely separated. And the only way I could have a new life, a new beginning, a new, a new walk on a new land was to know Jesus Christ and to understand what he'd done for me. Hallelujah. And I wanted that. I wanted that more than anything. Um, that Christ had paid that penalty for me, that Christ chose to come as his mission to teach about God and his kingdom, to fulfill the scriptures on, so that there would be no doubt of who he was and that he would take the choice despite my efforts or that it doesn't matter how much money you have or how good a person you think you are. God said, I will take the choice 
to pay the penalty for my love of my father, which is to offer my life as a living sacrifice and to shed my blood as sacrifice to wash, wash away that skewed, unrighteous, ungodly life that you're living, yes. And um, then I said, Lord, take me, just take me, cleanse me. I put my trust in you and what you've done. I believe in you. I believe in my heart that the work of God had been softening, opening, renewing my heart to a place of regeneration. And uh, I put my faith in Christ and became a Christian within that year, I think. Um, and there is, and it is transforming. I know everyone who meets Jesus has their own journey, wherever you are, wherever you're listening. Um, I know that this is a divine appointment. Um, I know that this is part of God's intervention with you tonight or wherever you are, what day, time of day. Um, and I know that you have your journey and he will skillfully be looking at you like that prodigal son and calling you to himself and drawing you to himself um, in only ways that you can understand. Um, but I know that that is exactly what he wants for you. He wants yeah. to redeem you to yes. himself. He wants to restore you, to restore your life mm -hmm. and to lead you in the path of righteousness and peace with him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Yaz. That's wonderful. What a wonderful way you've shared tonight. Thank you for the way, you've, the emotion, the feeling you, you've expressed tonight, the genuineness of your story. It's wonderful. We've had a lot of messages. People, many people already have been impacted by your message. One young man said when you shared about the prodigal, he had tears in his eyes. Oh. It's wonderful. And there are many people who've watched tonight. Many of you have listened to this story tonight from Yaz. Many of you would like to have that same experience that Yaz had, where she's got peace and joy, where she knows that the reality of salvation, where she knows that that relationship with a creator and God loves you. He wants that for you. Oh. Yaz said tonight that there's rejoicing in heaven or one person who makes that commitment. But I believe tonight 
today, who ever watches this now and in the future, there'll be many of you who want to make that commitment, want to give your life to Jesus, come to have that relationship with the one who is the living Lord. We're coming up to Easter very soon, and that's what we're celebrating, how Jesus came and died on that cross in your place, taking the penalty for your sins, and he shed his precious blood to wash your sins away, as you have said, and you become clean, you become a new creature, you become a new person, and have a new life completely. How do you do that? Well, it's very simple. You can't earn it, you can't work for it. Eternal life is a free gift, but like any gift, it has to be received. We have to acknowledge that we are sinners, that we have broken God's laws. And we deserve punishment for that. But Jesus came, and as I say, died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. And we have to acknowledge that and invite him to ask him to forgive us. We have to repent of our sins, turn away from them, and invite him to come into our heart and our life to be our Savior and our Lord. And if you do that, if you really mean that, he will come as he did for you, as he will come and you will become a new creature. So I'm going to say a prayer and I want you to follow me in this prayer sincerely. And if you are sincere tonight, you will become a child of God and receive the gift of eternal life. Follow me in this prayer sincerely right now. Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you now. I confess that I am a sinner, that I have broken God's laws. The Bible says we have all sinned. We have all come short of the glory of God. And that includes me. But I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross in my place, taking the punishment for my sins. And you poured out your precious blood to wash my sins away. I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. I turn to you with all my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my life right now by your spirit. And give to me the free gift of eternal life. I receive you now. I thank you for coming into my life. Now I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me, for making me a child of God. Help me from this day forward to serve you, to follow you. And I look forward to that day when you will come again and take me to be with you forever in heaven where there's no more war, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, no more crying. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please let us know. Contact us on our hotline, plus four four seven nine four three double five zero two eight seven. Or go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you'll find the salvation link, and you can click on how can I get to know God. And you can also get a Bible app, which will help you in your walk with God. Okay, I'm going to hand over to you, George. Thank you.
Hi Stories Live. Tonight, and hearing you, uh, hearing you share, it's been really wonderful. Uh, but there's a, a lady called Shalom who's asked for prayer. Shalom mm. is in South Wales. Just find this. Um, she said, "Could you pray?" Oh, yeah. She she works with with the women in a refuge, and she says, um, it, it, "It's not easy dealing with domestic abuse. I'm a survivor and now help the cause." My little light is shining, although I face opposition sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you could pray, not only for Sean, but pray pray for other people. If you could pray for people who are going to be watching in the future this story. Could you just pray a prayer for them? Father, Father, I thank you uh, for bringing this um, prayer request to us tonight. I thank you for your divine intervention. Father, I thank you that you love to hear the prayers of your people, that you move in the prayers of your people. Uh, Father, I would like to ask first that you would move by your spirit into the situation with Shalom in this refuge um, situation. Father, it is um, exhausting and overwhelmingly emotional um, to deal with lives that are suffering in such difficult ways, Father. We thank I thank you that you are a God of the homeless, Lord. You understand homelessness, Father, that you are God of um who, who walks with us in the need, Father, that you are the shepherd, Father, that walks with your sheep, that you are close to the brokenhearted, Father, that you understand the um suffering and pain father that you above all understand it um and that you can bring such an incredible peace father that um overshadows you can bring a, a joy even father that overshadows um in suffering that you are able to just love and bring comfort because you are god of comfort and compassion and mercy and Father, I thank you that you love Shalom deeply and that you've placed her there, Father, and that you will continue to build and strengthen her in, in this time, in this ministry, Lord. I ask personally as her sister, Lord, that you would provide for her um, someone as well, so a friend or someone, Lord, that will come alongside her. And um, as you provided for Paul, you provided Timothy, Father, and all these other apostles, Father, to come alongside us, Father, when we are walking in difficulties, Lord. Um, I pray that you would bring that to her, that you would bring that shalom to her, Lord, um, in, a, in a very real person. And I pray, oh God, that God of the nations, Lord, you... Father, that you are working. I know that you're working and moving in the storms. Father, that you stand in the storms. And when you're ready, Lord, you shout out for the storm to stop. Like you did in that boat. And I ask, Father, that while we're in the storms, then, that you would supply our need, Jehovah Jireh. Father, that you would provide shelter in ways beyond our understanding. Father, that you would provide healing. Father God, that you provide healing for those in need of healing tonight. Father, that those who are in Ukraine, I, Father, I thank you that your name is being glorified and sung and praised, Father, even in, even in their suffering. These are the ways that you move, Father. These are the ways that we become overcomers, Lord. I pray for more of you, more of you, Holy Spirit, in Ukraine working in lives, working in hearts, moving in minds, Father. And I pray that you'll be moving in, in, uh, in Russia as well, Lord, that you'll be, I know you are, Lord. 
Forgive me, Lord, but I pray that you'll be working in the president's life. Father, that you will show him that power is no match for humility. That money, Father, is meaningless compared to reconciling. That all these things that he's built his identity on, Lord, Father, will begin to crumble as you work in his heart. I pray, Father, for the Russian moms and dads who are losing their family and their children in this suffering, Father. I pray that, that all of this war will be, it's a bigger, Father, it's bigger than what it is. It's a bigger story, Father. It's the story of the gospel. It's the story of Jesus Christ coming to die for sin, for war, for separation, for hatred. Over and above all, Lord, I pray for that gospel message to be working, Father, in these two countries. I pray for Andrea tonight. I don't know. I just pray for her tonight. Thank you for bringing her name. Suffering loss, Father. Thank you that you understand loss. Father, that you understand loss above all things, Lord. Be a comfort to her, Lord. Comfort her. Comfort her, Lord. Show her the hope, Father. Show the future that is in you. Show her the hope that's there with you. Father God, give her the peace that passes understanding in her loss, Father. I pray for those, Father, who are um, uncertain, who have fear, Father, and uncertainty. Precious God, precious God, pray that you will work in their lives, Father, that you will show them there is one that is certain, whose future is certain in theirs. Pray that you will show them the gift of the foundation of knowing Jesus Christ, that when all the world is shaking and the seas are raging, and the winds are blowing, Jesus Christ is an anchor to the soul, a light in the darkness, a lamp to our feet. Father, pray for those who are really living in that, in that place at the moment. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Yes. Come to Jesus. Do you not be afraid? Come to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. It's been I could have listened to you all night and just Ooh. love hearing you sharing. We appreciate you taking the time. Yes. In a busy schedule. Thank you so much. I pray God will bless you and continue to use you in a great and wonderful way. Correct. And I'm sure this will be used to impact many, many people's lives, what you've okay. shared tonight. Can Thank you so more, much. One, can I just bring more, one more message, Alan? It's Georgia. There's a Joan Hart and says that she has been so blessed by this. Uh, can Yaz please give her a shout out? Oh, what was her name? Joanne. Joanne Horton. 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 Joanne Horton. <laughs> Bless you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and give you his peace. I love you. I love you. Bless you. We love you too, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you, George. Thank you, Howard. It's been so wonderful for tonight. What a wonderful evening. And we tell you, if you need help, please contact us on the hotline, plus 44-794-355-0287. Four, four, Go to our website, 
And again, you'll find out lots of wonderful information. You can listen to other stories that have been shared on the Monday evening. A lot of wonderful stories you can share. And I invite you to join us again next Monday, 8 o'clock UK time, for another live story. Next week, we have Charlie Hansen. Charlie was an ex-pro footballer with Manchester City until he got injured and his whole world collapsed, what, 19 years of age. He went into show business and became a comedian as Charlie Hale. And uh, he had lots of experiences, different jobs, but then he, he worked so hard, he had a mental problem, mental health. But today he's totally healed physically, mentally, and doing a wonderful work, which he will share with you next Monday. So tell your friends, pass on the information, tell people to subscribe to our channel. Bye. And I just pray you'll know God's blessing. Thank you so much for being with us. May God bless you and keep you in his love. May you know his peace, his joy in these coming days. God be with you. Good night, everybody. God, God bless. bless. Life Stories. Stories Live.